I think it's common knowledge that SABC3 is struggling, despite it being part of the biggest broadcasting station in the country. From January 2016 to July 2021, the channel has seen a significant drop in viewership, going from 1.5 million to just under 800,000 viewers. That's a drop of nearly half of its audience. To understand what went wrong, we first need to figure out how we got here. On the 4th of February 1996, the South African Broadcasting Corporation was separated into three channels. Each one of these were meant to represent numerous language groups, with SABC3 targeting an English-speaking audience. Most of the programs aired were from the United States and the United Kingdom. From the very beginning, SABC3 was always the least watched channel out of the three. Nevertheless, over the years, it was able to regularly pull in millions of viewers for some of their movies and programs. With shows like The Oprah Winfrey Show, Isidingo, and National Geographic, a two faced, tailless despot attracting massive audiences. The channel was even voted Best TV Station by Readers of the Star in 2012. The problems began in 2016, when the then Chief Operating Officer of the SABC, Xiaodi Mutoneng, announced in May that from July, 80% of the content aired would be local. This, of course, was the beginning of the end. The channel took a big hit when it cancelled one of its most popular shows, Days of Our Lives, which had a dedicated fan base and replaced it with Afternoon Express. This decision cost SABC3 40% of its audience during the 5pm time slot. To add to that, all the new shows launched by SABC3 tanked in ratings. One of these shows was Weekend Edition hosted by Kanyimbao and Fat Joe. It was meant to be a weekend version of the breakfast show Expresso, which aired on weekdays, but it did not fare well with viewers as some thought it was unoriginal. Things only got worse in 2019 when SABC3 made the shocking decision to cancel the American soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful, as well as the lifestyle television program, Top Billing which were firm fan favorites and were among the most highly rated and popular shows on the station. The very next year, after 21 years of being on air, SABC 3's most popular program, Isidingo, was cancelled. To make matters worse, they did not have another program to replace it with, so they just aired repeats of the show. That was the final nail in the coffin. SABC General Manager David Makubiani said, Poor audience ratings during the time slot, decline in revenue, and poor return on investment was the reason for the cancellations. In my opinion, the reasons for SABC3's loss in ratings is not necessarily because of the 80% local content quota, as the idea could have been a great opportunity for local producers filmmakers, companies, new ideas, and creative thinking. The problem is how it was implemented. Xiaori Motoneng's announcement of 80% local content was made in May and implemented the following month in July. Clearly, this did not give producers enough time to come up with complex, unique, and engaging ideas, leading to many viewers calling the new shows boring and uninspired. What SABC3 should have done was integrate their new shows with their already popular programs and started with a 50% local content quota and then moved it to 55%, then 60%, then 65% while testing which shows were being well received and which ones were not. They could have also used the commercial breaks of their most popular programs to let audiences know that a new show was coming soon. 
This approach might have alienated less viewers and advertisers, as SABC3 could have used the money made from their international programs to fund local quality content. The final thing SABC3 could have done was to first examine which of their international programs were popular and see if they could replicate or closely follow the premise of those shows. For example, The Amazing Race and Survivor are the top rated international shows on the station. So SABC3 could purchase the rights of these shows and create their own spin-off shows like The Amazing Race South Africa. This is similar to what the now most watched channel on DSTV Moja Love did when it revamped the American reality show Cheaters to create its most watched program Uya Jola 99 or what the second most watched channel on DSTV in Zanzi Magic did when it bought the rights to the now popular Idol South Africa and Big Brother Mzanzi. In 2021, an entire year after cancelling Isidingo, SABC3 finally found its replacement in a new soap opera called The Estate. Unfortunately, it was a little too late as most viewers had flocked to find alternative programs. According to the 2017 SABC annual report, 76% of the company's revenue comes from advertising and 5% comes from sponsorships. Because of the low number of viewers, SABC3 has been getting less money from sponsors and advertisers. This may have affected SABC3's budget negatively causing the station to be unable to invest money in fresh ideas for new shows. In July 2018, when SABC One's Generations The Legacy was moved to SABC Three because of the FIFA World Cup on SABC One, the ratings surged to 6.9 million. And in April 2020, the movie Contagion aid to a massive audience of 4.4 million people. This proves that the channel is capable of drawing in audiences when they put out interesting content. SABC Group Executive Gugunduri said, SABC3 needs an environment of support and consistency to flourish, as well as great PR and marketing. I would also add that it needs to diversify its content and to try and create unique shows. That's the only way it will stand out from its competitors like ETV, DSTV, and streaming services like Netflix. It will be interesting to see how the channel responds. Will the mass exuders continue, or will they get back on track and possibly bring in new viewers? Well, only time will tell.